Oh man, it happened again, everybody. I knew it was going to happen, but still, it hurts me every single time. I got some real problems here, some real first world Minecraft problems. You guys ever have that issue, like where Endermen come by and they steal your sombrero wearing cactus melons? Because, uh, yeah, it's it keeps happening. I replace them, but then they just disappear again. It's it's really frustrating, honestly. So I came over here, guys, and I dropped down a piece of Nylium, and I was trying to farm up these crimson fungi, right? I'm trying to get some nether resources together, and this is bone milling it here, getting the odd one every now and then, and, and it's been good, it's been okay, but then I start to realize, wait a minute, we have something to do this for us already, we just have to modify it very ever so slightly here, punch out two grass blocks, and now, look at this. Oh. Get the timing a little bit better. There we go. That's, look at that. Oh my goodness. So much better. Oh, we grew a tree. <laughs> okay, wait a minute. Might have a couple issues with this. One thing I really like about the nether update is pretty much every single block they're adding with it can be easily farmed or instant mined in some way. With the exception of uh, netherite. <laughs> but like everything else... Oh, that's kind of weird. That one grew crooked. You see that? Oh, that one did too. Uh-huh. Everything else is pretty easy to get, though. Those things grow pretty tall, actually. This is what we ended up with. We have, like, 64 fungi grown here together. I think it was last episode, we did some trading with the piglins, and we ended up getting a netherite hoe off of them. I've enchanted it now with efficiency, and we can instant mine the nether warp blocks that grow on these trees, which is pretty cool. You can instant mine shroom lights with it as well. Ooh, okay, so looking at this, I'm pretty sure the nether wart blocks overwrite the wood if they grow over top of it. So we ended up with very little wood here, actually. Um, it's probably best not to grow them together like this then. <laughs> but it was, uh, it was interesting to try it out. Yep, yep, and as you saw there, we can also instantly mine the crimson and warped woods. And you can use these to craft wood products like chests and stuff. So that's a new way of, of collecting wood quickly, because like spruce, you can't instant mine. None of the other wood types, just the new ones. And next up on our incredibly easy to farm list, we have the basalt block, guys, which is a especially interesting one. So basalt has its own biome, basalt deltas. You'll find plenty of the stuff there if you need it. But even if that's not enough, they made a way for you to be able to generate it. So if you put lava and have it flow over top of soul soil and then touch some blue ice, it'll create a basalt block in the middle here. Um, I messed around with a few different farms for this. Obviously, you make AFK farms and stuff with it, but I thought this one was particularly satisfying and interesting. <laughs> Maybe a little less obvious. Um, we use some note blocks here and can easily make a bunch of smart pistons to create a big slab of this stuff. I, I just love watching this thing. It's so cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, so basalt can be instant mined. You only need a haste one beacon and like diamond tools or netherite tools. Uh, but it, it has the same hardness as uh, hardened clay, terracotta. Uh, hardness of 1.25, which, uh, funny enough, makes it a block that you can instant mine with gold picks uh, without a haste beacon. While we can't do this with netherite. You see this? We try to break it with our netherite pick. It's not able to instant mine it, but if we use gold, we can. There is actually a way to farm soul soil as well. It's just kind of weird and convoluted and not really efficient. <laughs> if you can go to the soul sand valley, that's the way to get the stuff. Uh, but you can farm it by making soul campfires using soul sand. You can get soul sand from piglin bartering. Like if you're playing a sky block, you might actually want to end up doing this. Uh, place these down. It turns out you can't instant mine these though. I've been trying here. So with fortune. You only break them it so quickly, but it gives you soul soil as a drop. Uh, also, you can trade with villagers for campfires. These give you charcoal. Oh, two pieces when you break them. Um, so that's a way to buy fuel from villagers. But again, it's not really worth it. But yeah, if you go to Soul Sand Valley, you can just instant mine the stuff. So I went on a bit of a trip here around the nether, doing some exploring, trying to find a good location to set up our nether base. That is our goal for today. 
Also, the reason we're collecting a lot of these resources. Um, I ended up finding a tiny little... What was it called again? The Salt Deltas, yeah. <laughs> Which, uh, it's not really a super nice one, so I figured this is the one I'm going to destroy to get the Blackstone. Which is, again, another block you can instant mine if you have haste too. Alright, everybody, so I'm getting pretty excited here. We're going to start building the Crimson Keep. Very soon, very, very soon, we got our Blackstone. Uh, over a full shulker box of it. Even raided a couple nether fortresses. Got horse armor. Uh, I was maybe looking for a dual blaze spawner. <laughs> but I didn't end up finding one. Like if I did, it would probably influence where we actually build the base. Uh, still haven't quite figured that out yet. But I do know exactly what building pellet I want to go for. Um, spoiler alert, it's not this. I've seen a lot of people using this building pellet. And I think it looks pretty good actually. Uh, but I feel it's better for like fantasy sort of builds more so with the brighter brighter blocks I actually don't to be honest with you. I don't like the nether brick with the blue too much I've seen a lot of people combine the two together But I do like these other six and I would probably use a different contrasting color if it was me Oh, ho, ho, snappers, <laughs> so I think we found it guys. We got our location. I've been doing some more browsing around looking through the nether I have found a spot. It's at uh, minus 1,000, minus 3,500 here. So it's a little ways from zero, zero, but it's not crazy. I think that's a doable trip still. As far as building scheme, the block pellet, I wanted to use the black stone. It's the new cool block, right? And then I thought, hey, crimson forest is my favorite of the biomes. Let's go for red. So we're probably going to use the crimson wood, maybe some other red blocks to mix in with it. Um, and then I started thinking what else would go with these two. And it's like, okay, oranges, yellows, and light gray. I think that's like a traditional Chinese color scheme. I could be wrong about that, though. <laughs> uh, but when I see, like, fancy Chinese uh, buildings, like in movies, movies and stuff, I think of these colors for some reason. So that is what inspired it. And now, as far as location goes, I wanted a area with, like, two big land masses, like... Big landmass here, a big landmass here, and a lava moat in the middle. And I wanted to build a big bridge to like a castle. Let's go take a look around. Look at this. We are in this pretty amazing nether fortress, actually. It looks pretty cool. But then it joins up with a... What do you call it? A bastion or something? <laughs> uh, one of the new structures in the game. Let's take a little peek inside. And I recognize the layout of this one. It is the one with the magma slime uh, spawner inside and like the giant room. So I got to thinking, this is pretty cool. Probably very dangerous in here, by the way. <laughs> oh, I thought I heard someone load up a crossbow. Um, yeah, so the fortress goes right into this thing, actually. And ooh, I was thinking maybe let's move inside and like take this place over or renovate it or do something similar of that nature. Um, so I was looking around outside of the, the bastion here. Oh, I should have ate before I jumped down. That was dangerous. If I got caught up on that bridge. <laughs> it would have been bad news. <gasps> Oh, there's no lava. I thought there was lava below there. That freaked me out really bad. I think this is where we want to do it. Um, if we... Yeah, I think I think this is the side over here. So I, I was looking around outside. Yeah, here it is. There's a big... Big lava area here. And then we got more of the crimson forest over, over here. So what I'm thinking... We're going to start here with our build, I'm going to build a big massive bridge from here to there and then we'll build like a cool looking castle facade in front of that thing and then that bastion is going to be the interior of our, our base. Okay, so let's get to it here guys. So the first thing I did is I just set up a, a temporary hut, probably fill this up with chests and like the stone cutter and different different things. So when I fill my inventory up of junk, I'll have somewhere to drop it off. Uh, then I built like a temporary bridge to, so I can try to figure out how I want it to line up with the bastion here. Uh, like what height level the bridge should be at. You 
can fit through there, really. Oh, oh. No, you're not getting away. <laughs> not after that. So I think this is the center. Unfortunately, it's like an even number. So I'll probably have to either lopsided it to this side or over here. Um, this is about 45 blocks long from, from that island to the bastion. Now, I need to figure out roughly what I'm calling the wall here. So this is like a walkway area inside. What's behind here? We got a staircase. And then it looks like the wall is like two blocks thick here, actually. So I'm going to try to go off of odd numbers as much as I can. So let's just say it's three blocks wide. And then, like, this is a big cube, this building here. So if we want to give it any shape or definition, we're going to need to come out quite a few blocks away from that. So I'm thinking at least seven, probably more. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, I don't know what I'm doing exactly. <laughs> I'm going to say, let's go this far away from the, the face of the thing, though. So roughly where we're standing at this torch here is going to be the start of our Crimson Keep. Right where we're standing is going to be the door, like the entrance into it. And then the bridge is going to go right up to that door. So let's work on the bridge here. Uh, my fire resistance has worn out, so i got to check if i got any more of my shulker boxes. Um... Oh wait, I think I want this as a center. So what we're gonna do, get rid of that one. I think the pattern we're going for first off here is two crimson wood and then a shroom light in the middle. And that's gonna extend all the way down here. I want plenty of light with this build. If you guys don't know it, I really hate dark uh, nether builds. <laughs> drives me crazy. So it's gonna be gloomy, right? It's gonna be gloomy, but I want it to be a little bit bright. Here's the tough part now. Uh, we have so many options with the Blackstone. It's like we got to decide which one we're actually going to go for. I think for a bridge, the polished Blackstone makes the most sense. Like, I think the bricks are better for walls. When I do the borders of a bridge, I usually like to go a slab below, like, the base of it. So I think we're going to go down a slab and then up one. We'll be able to see a little bit of crimson wood through the side here. Full blocks above those. Now, you might have noticed with our bridge here, the Shroom Light and the Crimson Wood don't exactly blend together the best. Uh, so we're going to try and mellow them out a bit uh, by putting glass over top. And then we're going to have red glass over the Crimson Wood. And then I want to start mixing in some Acacia as well. Yeah, so I think that's good. That adds a bit of 3D depth to the bridge and also a little bit of variation with the colors. The shroom lights aren't quite as uh, shocking either with a bit of glass over top. And now we're going to line the border here so we don't fall off with some of these bricks. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. So I'm liking the look of this. I do feel like the bridge needs to be a bit longer though, so we'll probably extend it further onto land here or even terraform a bit. And have more lava below here. Um, but the look is okay. I'm really trying to push myself with this build to get better at bigger structures. It's something I kind of suck at, <laughs> to be honest. So I'm having a huge bridge. Like really trying to add space to the build. I usually I like to go small and compact. Uh, with the entrance, I'm going to go up, I think, seven blocks here for the door. Another thing I'm pushing myself to do with this build is to use a lot of walls. Uh, walls are a lot better now than they used to be. You can kind of use them as vertical slabs with this update. Like, if you if you do this, it actually looks really good now. <laughs> you don't have that space between them anymore. Um, so th to get your building to the next level, that's what you're, you're going to have to start doing, and I need to practice. So I'm going to use them for detailing, for... Adding interesting shapes and stuff to the build. So this way, like, we don't have a big piece of orange now. We just have, like, a thin line there. All right, so check it out, guys. We're using the black stone here to beef up our door. Make it look a bit more impressive. A little bit more structurally sound. Uh, I snuck in some red clay over here. It's a thin sliver of it. You can barely notice. Blends in pretty close to the acacia. And I'm starting to use basalt as well. I think we're going to go for the polished basalt. I like it a little bit more. Um, and now I'm kind of getting to the point where I just need to start detailing this thing, and it's going to be hard to record that. <laughs> a lot of trial and error. Uh, but I was thinking 
try to mix some of this stuff in over here. All right. Uh, I brought some. Yeah, that's kind of cool. I brought some acacia fences to use as like the thingy that comes down from the door, the actual door. I don't know what you call it. it starts with a P. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. And now I also want to detail the bridge a bit more. So I think every fifth block, one, two, here, let's count on the glass. It's easier. One, two, three, four, five. We're going to add a piece of basalt here and then like a slab over top of that. So that's our piece of basalt. I got a slab, a stair, chiseled, and now this is going to go straight down into the ground, into the lava there. A couple walls here, which are nice because they don't connect to the slabs, so they look kind of cool. And then some stairs, and I'm going to try detail underneath the bridge even, which is uh, going to be tough here. So I think we're going to run some slabs all along the shroom lights. We'll leave the crimson wood exposed. I like how it looks. We'll run a beam across. And what? <laughs> some stairs, maybe? I kind of start arching up to, to support this. Uh-huh. I'll figure something out. I messed with it a bit here, and we actually went for a pretty detailed uh, arch thing here. So I like the shape of this. I think that's a good arch. Uh, and then we replaced a lot of the slabs with stairs and just did some funny patterns with them. I got a couple chiseled blocks in here. And I've been using the nether wart as my scaffolding because it's easy to collect. You can grow it. Easy to mine up afterwards. Oh, you jerk. I'm, I'm working here, man. I'm working here. These are the dangerous guys. The ones with the gold swords, they do so much damage so quickly. And if they're enchanted, you're just like dead instantly. Yeah, we can't reach that. And it looks like it's floating on the lava if we don't go just a little bit further down, so we ha actually have to go one more block lower. Oh yeah, okay, that looks pretty cool. I like it. They do open doors, by the way. It's pretty, pretty freaky. <laughs> I still haven't died. If I die, I'm gonna be so sad, though. It's quite the walk to get back here. Uh, I was looking at the time on this episode, and man, where has it gone, guys? I got so much more stuff I want to do with this yet. I'll probably be building a lot of it off camera. Uh, but yeah, check it out. We've added more details to the bridge, more details to the, the gate there, the entrance. So these are campfires on top of the basalt here. I kind of like that. Uh, it adds in the yellow, the orange, and a little bit of life to the build. Having the animation is nice. Um, I do kind of wish I made the bridge wider now that I've done this, though. Because these things stick out unless I get rid of them or... Something, I don't know. Get rid of these. It's not bad either, is it? I think that's okay. Maybe uh, maybe you guys have a suggestion. Let's see what you say in the comments, but I'm going to leave them there for now. Um, added some, some of these Chinese lantern things on the front here. <laughs> I kind of like that. I don't have any string on me, though, so I can't stop them from growing. Um, and now, oh yeah, the best part here. We're going to add some danglies. Uh, okay, let's go up here. This is a new thing I, I've learned to do, guys. It's going to be amazing. So we add some acacia. to look like rope. And we add another. Or how do I want to do this? Maybe we go down again. Oh. Oh, I misplaced. And end it with one of those. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I like those. Now, do you guys remember a couple episodes ago, we were working on that bee farm in the end. And you remember how I don't finish my projects. Well, it's it's really haunting me this time. Because <laughs> I could not find any honey. I thought I had like a stack of it at least at the base somewhere, but I couldn't find it. So I'm using gold blocks as a placeholder for right now. But that's where I want to put the honey, up over there. Honey is a little bit more brownish, orangish. So it will blend in a lot better. That really stands out um, but that's that's kind of what we're going for and I think we're about done with the door here like the entrance I had some jaggedies up at the top there and the next thing I think we should do with this is oof and boof add two towers next to the entrance here to, to beef up the build a bit more um, the problem is because we're not building this on land like I originally planned, <laughs> it's just going to be like uh, lava below here. 
So we either need to make the towers go down into the lava or I need to do some terraforming here and make it look like there's actually some land like at the edge here, um, which might be the best thing to do because I would like to get the Nilium, the red Nilium in with this build as well. Oh man, okay, well that was a lot of building guys, but check it out, the Crimson Keep is uh, pretty much, well not done, but uh, we got a nice faceplate to it at least. Um, but honestly, it's not bad, like if you look at the width of the towers there, they end just about at the width of the bastion that sticks out about five blocks further there. So if we just add a little bit more bulk, we can kind of surround the whole thing. And we'll probably want to build some more towers up above there as well, or more structure in time. But I think the next thing we're going to be doing uh, with this is start working on the interior. And then later we might come back to the front here and add more to it. Uh, but yeah, look at our look at our towers. These things are nuts. <laughs> so much detail on them. Oh, it's a it's a sword deck. No, no. Well, you saw it at least. <laughs> oh no! I got I got uh, teamed up on at the very end. Now I know what you guys are thinking, Etho. Why didn't you just make the new save point thing, the respawn anchor? Uh, because like I found the spot there, and I managed to build all of that without heading back home. Um, but like as soon as I was gonna head back home, I was gonna make one of these for sure, and get honey and all that kind of stuff. But now we gotta head back there. Oh, I only got three armor. Oh no, I forgot to grab pants, didn't I? Pants are important. Gotta be pretty close to here. Oh, that's the fortress. That's it. We found it. Oh, and there's the build. Wow, okay, that worked out really well, actually. I don't think we lost anything or nothing important that I can tell. So that was pretty lucky. <laughs> it's because we used walls, guys. Oh, such a good decision. They're a little bit taller, you know. It's harder for the items to fall uh, overboard. So let's figure out how this uh, respawn anchor works. We're going to set it up in our, our little hut here. Uh, put it down. I think we put glowstone in. Very good, very good. So now if we die with that respawn anchor, we'll respawn in our little hut there and we brought some backup gear with us. And we got backup food and stuff, so it shouldn't be as big of a deal if we do die here now. Um, so yeah, these are our towers again, <laughs> by the way. So they're pretty detailed. They actually go like seven blocks thick or so, maybe even more than that. They're pretty, pretty crazy. Um, uh-huh. And then I'm, I'm thinking we're going to have a bit of a walkway to get into the build, or into the bastion here. And then later, like with this empty space, we can put some rooms. Is that not closed up? Did I open that up? Okay. Um, but yeah, maybe let's just go check this out real quick as well. Uh, fire resistance, let's drink one of them. I brought a totem with me, <laughs> so I'm not taking as many chances now. I think of all the structures or all the dungeons in the game, this is probably one of the dangerous, if not the dangerous one now. Little guys don't attack you. The little piggies do though. They'll, they'll like attack you and if you hit them they run away. If you let them. Um, so, that is the magma cube spawner, which is kind of cool. It's like right under the entrance. We're gonna go down here. I think there's some good stuff in the middle there. We're gonna go get that. If we can. I mean, I, I got the fire resist, right? Shouldn't be so scared. I'm gonna leave the gold and everything in, in its place. Oh, we got pants. <laughs> awesome. Oh, oh, magma cubes do hurt a lot though. Is it just the one chest? It's just the one, yeah. Cool, cool. Uh, but there's more throughout the whole bastion here. Let's see, how do we get back up? Oh, there's kind of some stairs here. I didn't know that. Stairs, and then there's little side stairs here. Go up the layers. And by the way, I haven't thought a whole lot about how I'm going to renovate this place. Like, what colors we're going to use or anything like that. 
or how we're going to do it. So if you guys have any suggestions on what we should do with this build, I would love to hear them. Um, but I was kind of just thinking now, maybe since we ha also have the nether fortress, maybe we use this area, the fortress, for our farms. Like we set them up along the corridor here. And we might want to renovate the fortress as well. Change out the blocks maybe from nether brick to something else and uh, try to make it look nice. Could be cool as well. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I think there is a blaze spawner in there too, but I didn't find any dual blaze spawners, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, let's go up here. This is the top of our home. Oh. Oh, wait, is there another one connected to this? I think there might be. We got a lava room over here. Let's make sure I keep eating here. Uh huh. It is going to spawn these guys constantly in this this base. We'll either have to find some way of dealing with them or we'll have to learn to live with them or like wear gold armor or something. Oh, I don't know if this is going to go anywhere actually. It's kind of kind of strange. And dead end. <laughs> There's that giant lava lake near here. So if we want to set up any farms like crimson, uh, crimson forest farms, this is a good place to do it nearby here as well. Oh, there's another chest. Another two chests. Woohoo! <laughs> now, I think if I take that, they're going to get mad at me, right? Maybe? Oh, we got some string. I actually needed string for the, the vines there. That's a great find. Got some spectral arrows. Oh, and some chains. Oh, another double chest. More of the black stone. We got some crying obsidian. Obsidian. No record, though. So I thought there was only one blaze spawner up, but there's one over there, and they might be close enough, <laughs> but I don't think they are. No, they're definitely not. Ah, oh, it's too bad. The other one's over here. Well, anyways, guys, we made the trip back home again here, and I think we got to wrap up the episode. <laughs> I did have a redstone project I wanted to do today, but there's just not enough time now. Uh, so I'll have to wait for another one. The comment of the day says, Hi, Ergo. How do you keep motivation playing Minecraft? I want to be back in the game and enjoy it like in the old days. Put together a vanilla plus mod pack and played on an amplified world, but I don't know. I don't seem to get into it. How do you motivate yourself to keep playing, especially for such a long time? Now that is a great question. There's a lot of things that could be said about this. Um, <laughs> where to begin? I think uh, probably the biggest thing is uh, if you're playing single player, Single player gets boring. <laughs> I hate to say it. It's different for me because I'm doing YouTube. So I'm not just playing by myself here. Uh, anything I do in my world here gets seen by hundreds of thousands of people, actually, which is crazy. And then they give me feedback on it. They judge me on it. Um, you know, if it's good, they give me good feedback. If it's bad, they give me bad feedback. Sometimes it's, it's just neutral or whatever. Anyways, that kind of pushes me to try harder. Right, because I want to give a good, uh, good impression with my videos, so I tend to do bigger projects as well, um, which is another big thing. Try to do new stuff in the game. That's a big thing, because uh, again, I want people to see something they haven't seen before in another video. Um, like if you're just copying someone's builds or farms or whatever or something you've done in the past and you're just rebuilding it again, you're gonna get bored. You gotta you gotta push yourself to try new stuff out. I think another huge, huge motivator for me is uh, new content as well. So you might notice I'll usually have a vanilla series going and a modded series or two. And usually the modded series are quite different from each other, right? Like Terraforma Craft is nothing like Pixelmon or like Enigmatica too. Those are totally different types of uh, Minecraft experience. Um, and then Mojang keep putting out new patches. <laughs> uh, I actually feel kind of overwhelmed with all this stuff that they keep adding to the game. In fact, I got some big projects I've been wanting to do in my world here. I just keep pushing them off because uh, I can't get through the, the new content. Can't make farms quick enough to uh, uh, deal with all this stuff added. Like today, I had to build a nether base because of the nether update, right? Now, I'm going to spend a few episodes on that, I'm sure. Um, yeah. New content helps a lot too.
Anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's episode. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I said that already. Take care. Have a good day. Bye-bye.